Fisher Creations and for today we are going to do something different guys because my channel reached 2,000 subs back with the home 2,000 subscribers guys can you believe it I cannot believe it guys this is insane thank you so much to each and every one of you for subscribing to my channel and this, this, is, this means so much to me, you guys have no idea. Each and, each and every time each of you subscribe to my channel, it just, it makes me realize how closer and closer I get to, to having my dream goal of having my own, my own, my own yarn shop or like having my dream goal of having my own yarn shop and having my own craft room and this is this is beyond me this is so crazy guys you have no idea I appreciate every single one of you here on this channel I really really do and This is just crazy. I cannot believe it. Honestly. Each and every day that I get a new subscriber, I can just see my end goal in view. <laughs> Which is having my own crochet shop and teaching crochet and selling yarn and and all of that stuff and pursuing my career full time. And um I am honestly so appreciative of each and every one of you guys. Honestly, this is this is crazy. Um, but anyway, so um, in order to celebrate 2,000 subscribers, I have bought a Barwon cake. It's a nice, beautiful little chocolate cake to celebrate um, the 2,000 subscribers. So let's cut the cake, shall we? I kind of forgot to get my lighter, so let me go get my lighter quite quickly. So I've got my lighter and all that, and now I'm going to cut the cake. So um, I've just got it here on a chopping board, so I'm just going to cut the cake. Yeah, so I've got a plate here with everything. Um, um, I'm just going to cut a slice out, and then we will celebrate. <laughs> Um, so yeah, this is what the cake looks like. Isn't that just so divine? Like, look at that cake. Uh, okay. <clears throat> I kind of want to cut the cake here on camera, so I'm just gonna... Let's do this. I don't know if I should put the candle on the big round cake and then... Okay, let's do that. Okay. So I'm gonna put my little candle in. And bear in mind, it's pink. <laughs> So I've had a little so put that in the middle, and then let's get my lighter. This is a, um, this is a lithium battery lighter, so it literally doesn't use any gas, it's just a lithium battery. So how cool is that? It doesn't have any flame, it just has like this little, and this has this later. <laughs> oh, 2,000 subscribers, guys. Can you believe it? Oh, thank you so much, guys, for each and every one of you who has subscribed. This is beyond me. Thank you so much for taking this time to, se to celebrate 2,000 subscribers. And for today's tutorial, we'll learn how to crochet a bar one cake keychain. Hence the bar one cake as well. Um, so yeah, I am super excited about this guys. Again, thank you so much to each and every one of you who have subscribed to my channel. I really, really do appreciate it. Thank you so much guys. Um, I, I want to blow out this candle, but at the same time I do not want to because I don't know how to put it, but I feel like having this candle lit on the cake just really, it really has a connection to me with you guys. Um, with each and every one of you who, have, who has subscribed to my channel and 
I I couldn't be more happier honestly thank you guys so so much I wish there was something greater that I can do to to say thank you I really wish there was but <laughs> I don't have anything unfortunately um but yeah so thank you guys very much for 2000 subscribers and um, yeah, I hope you enjoy more of my content that I'll be releasing to this channel. Yeah, I don't know why I'm getting like emotional. <laughs> this is crazy. Thank you guys so much. Now let's blow out this candle, shall we? <laughs> I guess it's one of these candles that doesn't want to last. That doesn't, that doesn't want to go out. Um, I said to her, I was like, I really hope that the candles that we have do not give us any trouble. And she's like, no, I'm sure, I'm sure it won't and everything like that. And I'm like, okay. And the candle gave us problems. Okay, but anyway, so now I'm going to cut the cake now and then we can enjoy our slice of cake together. Yep. I just actually didn't need shove my finger into the side of it because that was funny. Okay, so now I'm just gonna cut the cake. traditional cream on the inside when the other one that we, that we have the other one that we buy it is chocolate um, uh, I think it's chocolate butter icing if I'm not mistaken um, but yeah this looks like it's just cream I'm not a fan of cream but anyway we'll eat it <laughs> but yeah um, I still can't believe we are at 2000 subs it's so crazy I cannot believe we're at 2,000 subs, honestly. It is so, so, so crazy. I cannot believe it. <laughs> Each and every day, this, this just makes me realize my worth, I guess. <laughs> and what, what I can do with my talent and everything. And I'm so glad that, that you guys can be a part of it. Really, I am. I love the chocolate ganache on this cake. It is always the best. So the chocolate ganache is the, the outside part of the cake. It is my favorite part. When we used to buy the bowl one cake, um, back then, like a couple years back, they used to have like the, the ganache layer on the outside used to be like quite thick. Um, <laughs> so what I used to do because I love the ganache part so but so much, I used to eat the sponge cake and leave just a little owl shape of the ganache, you know, the top and the, the side of the cake. And then I'll literally eat the sponge and then I'll save the, the ganache part for last because of how tasty and divine it is. Well, that was nice. Um, <clears throat> okay, so now the actual celebration is now complete. Um, 
and the appreciation of you guys is complete and celebrating 2000 subscribers with me <laughs> i still gonna believe it guys okay let's get on with today's tutorial on how to crochet the bar one cake slap let's get started shall we okay so in order to crochet um this cute little bar one cake keychain these are the materials that we'll be needing so for the actual cake, I'll be using this yarn. Um, so this is Charity Double Knit Pool Skein Weight Yarn. Um, it's 100% acrylic. It is approximately 233 meters or 256 yards. And it is a 100 gram ball. Um, and recommends a 4 millimeter crochet hook. And this is the color Peach Brown. So it's not quite like black, but it may look like black. I've, I've been mistaken by this yarn as black before. <laughs> But yeah, it's like a really dark brown, which we'll be using as the ganache of the cake, or like the outside of the cake. Um, <clears throat> so this is the peak brown that we'll be using. And then we have cocoa brown, which is like a little bit of a darker brown. So not a darker brown, a little bit of a lighter brown. And we'll be using this for the sponge of the cake. And then we have camel brown, which is an even lighter brown. And we'll be using this for the... Um, for the chocolate butter icing inside the cake um, <clears throat> and then for the candle um, I'll be using this Kismet lollipop twinkle double knitting um, yarn it's a DK weight yarn it's 100% uh, sorry it's 100 grams and it is 300 meters approximately and it's 94% acrylic and 6% metallic so I thought this would be perfect for the candle because it has that like metallic kind of look and it recommends a 4mm crochet hook and it's the color 26 light blue and the lot number is 50427 um, so yeah that's what we'll be needing for the candle and then um, for the actual flame you'll only be needing um, a really little bit of this we'll only be needing the yarn um, to make the flame and then we'll like brush it out um, so yeah you'll need like a little brush or comb as well to do that um, which I forgot to include here in the list of materials uh, but yeah you'll need a little bit of yellow just like one little strand of yellow not much at all and then I have some chunky orange um, it's only orange that I have um, on hand at the moment um, so yeah um, so you also only need a really little bit of this and then to go with all the materials I'll be using a two millimeter crochet hook just to get um, our stitches nice and small and tight and nice and neat and then with that you'll also be needing a tapestry needle um, you'll also be needing a pair of scissors and you'll also be needing some stuffing which again I've forgotten about the stuffing <laughs> um, but you'll also be needing um, a pair of scissors to push that stuffing into the cake okay so I got my stuffing out um, I had to get it out anyway so I just went and grabbed it and again as I said you'll be needing um, you'll be needing your pair of scissors to push the stuffing into the work and then with that um, I'll also be using a pair of jewelry pliers and a keychain and a jump ring and I'll be using the jewelry pliers to secure the jump ring or the keychain onto the, the cake keychain <laughs> onto the cake to make it a keychain okay so that is it for the materials um, so let's get started shall we okay so I just kind of wanted to show you kind of black black like where we'll be going at with this cake um, so yeah we're gonna be working on this section now which is the back of the cake and we'll be using peat brown for that so yeah I kind of swapped everything out here so what you see here it'll be kind of the opposite in terms of the peat and the cocoa brown so I'm going to use the really dark brown for the ganache on the outside and then um, cocoa brown for the sponge and then caramel for the icing so this is what it's going to look like so we'll do one of these and then two of these side pieces exactly the same and then we'll do one with the peat brown or the dark brown and then we'll do one with the peat brown because of the sponge of the cake if it makes any sense so yeah I just thought I'd show you so the size of the cake it is going to be six centimeters by eight centimeters by six if that makes any sense so it's going to be this square is going to be a six by six square 
and then this rectangle is going to be a six centimeter by eight centimeter um, rectangle and then obviously the triangle um, will be eight um, sorry it will be six centimeters along this edge and then eight centimeters along that edge but yeah I'll walk you through this whole thing um, once we get there um, so yeah this is my first time designing a cake so yeah oh like a cake keychain so yeah I hope it goes well <laughs> um, but yeah so let's get started so I'm gonna put that aside and then you'd want to grab your peat yarn <clears throat> Okay, so what you'd want to do is you want to form your slip knot. So you want to take your crochet hook, then you want to lay your work over your two fingers. So you want to take your, your tail end and your working yarn, put that over your two fingers, and then taking your, your yarn, you're going to wrap, wrap it around your fingers once, and then the second time you're going to cross over to form an X. Then you're going to go underneath that first loop, and pick up that second loop then you're going to take your slip knot off your, your fingers and then pull on your tail end and you're, you're working on tight to pull in that slip knot okay so let me just zoom in you in here okay so now to get started on the back of the cake what we're going to do is we're going to we're going to make a chain um that can that measures six centimeters so so now we're going to chain so now in order to chain we're going to yarn over and pull that loop through that loop on your hook you're going to yarn over and pull that yarn through that loop on your hook okay so that's two three okay so you want to chain a length of chains that measures um six centimeters so if i get my ruler out um you'd want to measure um, you want to chain until it measures six centimeters okay so that's three four five six seven eight nine ten so let me bring out my okay so it's almost there ten eleven twelve thirteen Thirteen's about it. Let's make it fourteen. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so we're gonna chain fourteen, and then from there you're gonna flip your work over to reveal these back bums. Yeah, and then we're gonna work under those back bums. Um, okay, so you're gonna find your first chain and then work underneath that back bump. Then you're gonna yarn over, pull through. Then you're gonna have two loops on the hook. Then you're gonna yarn over and pull through all two to finish off your single crochet. Again, you're going to find that back loop of the next stitch. Then you're going to yarn over, pull through. You'll have two loops on the hook. Then you're going to yarn over and pull through all two. And you will just repeat that all the way across. And your stitch count should have gone... Um, sorry. Then by the end of this round, you should have 13 stitches because that last chain um, counts it as like a turning chain. So that's what it should be looking like now. So you should have 13 stitches. So if we count from the beginning, we have one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, and thirteen. Okay. So you should have 13 stitches by the end of this row by the end of this row. Um okay. so moving on to the next row, row, you can chain one and turn your work. And then you're just gonna place one single crochet into each stitch around. Um, until the end and you will just repeat this row until your work measures six centimeters tall or in length if that makes any sense so it's going to be a little six by six little cube well not cube it's going to be a six by six little square um, so yeah you'll just continue placing one single crochet in each stitch around sorry each stitch across um, and then turn your work and then 
so you can chain one and then turn your work and then again just place one single crochet in each stitch around sorry in each stitch across I'm so used to doing my amigurumi, amigurumis and working in the round gosh but I keep saying um, place one single crochet in each stitch around <laughs> place one single crochet in each stitch across okay um, so yeah, you'll just continue placing one single crochet in each stitch across until um, your work measures six centimeters by six centimeters. Okay, so you can go off and then I'll come back and show you what to do from there. Okay. Okay, so now I have come back and I have completed um, a total of 14, 14 rows. So it's 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14. Yeah, a total of 14 rows and it measures 6 centimeters. So it's 6 centimeters in width and 6 centimeters in length. Okay, so just to clarify, we did um, we did 13 single crochets by 14 rows. So it's almost <laughs> it's almost exact. Okay. So that is it for the one side, for the back side of the cake. So now we, we can now end off this little section. So you can grab your scissors and snip off, um, snip off your yarn. And you're going to yarn over and pull through and pull up and out. Okay. And then you can just take your tapestry needle and then just weave in these ends. Just so that we don't have to worry about them later. Um, if you want to weave in them later, by all means, you can. Um, I just thought this would just make our life a little bit easier now, wouldn't it? Okay, then you're just going to sew underneath some of these stitches here. Okay, making sure your needle does not poke out the other side. Okay, you don't want to pull your work too tight, you don't want to distort your work. Um, Okay, and then what you want to do, you just want to insert your needle maybe into the next row and work under some of those stitches. Okay, and then once you're happy with that, you can just snip your tail end. Okay, and then you can just repeat the same for your, your beginning tail end. you're happy with that again you can just snip off your tail end okay so there is our one back side of the cake done or um yeah the back of the cake done and now i think we're going to work on the two sides of the cake first and then go into the triangles i think it'll be just a bit easier that way um okay so we can put our peach brown one side and you can grab your cocoa brown which is the darker brown sorry not the darker brown the lighter brown I keep saying dark brown but it's the lighter brown so you can uh, put your um, uh, your your peat brown square aside and you can bring out your cocoa and again we are going to make a slip knot And now we are going to chain a length of chains that is eight centimeters long okay so i'm going to start off by chaining 14 because that's what we chained for the other one so i'm just going to use that as reference Eighteen. Yeah, that's like spot on. <laughs> Eighteen. Okay. 
and then you're gonna find your second chain and then you're gonna place one single crochet into two and in each chain across one single crochet in each stitch around and you should have a total of 17 stitches since we did 18 so if we count that's 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 16 and 17 that's correct yeah okay, so we just see so it's not actually quite 18 so we need to stretch this a little bit then it's 18, so then it's 8, not 18. <laughs> then it's 8 centimeters, so I think that's fine. Okay, and then again, so now, yeah, so now if I bring out my my paper here, um, so we're gonna have three layers of peat brown and then two layers of camel brown, sorry, not peat brown, uh, cocoa brown. So we're gonna have three layers of cocoa brown and then two layers of of camel brown so let's see so we have um we have two four six eight ten um ten twelve fourteen so we have exactly fourteen fourteen rows here so so we can do so we can do four um we can do four cocoa um and then one camel and then four one camel and then four again okay so we can do four rows of cocoa one row of camel four rows of cocoa and then one row of camel and then four rows of cocoa okay so then we're going to turn our work and then we're going to place one single crochet in each stitch across and you, you should have um, you should have kept the same stitch count as 17 single crochets okay and you will just repeat row two until you have a total of um, until you have a total of four rounds of cocoa brown and then we are going to change to um, then we're going to change to camel brown and do one row of camel and yeah then we'll continue like that but for now you can go off and you can place one single crochet in each stitch across until you have a total of four rounds of cocoa brown okay Okay, so now I am back and I have completed four rows of camel brown, sorry, four rows of cocoa brown. Yo, I'm getting confused with all of these browns. Okay, so I've completed um, four rows of um, the cocoa brown and now we're going to color change to, uh, to camel brown. So I'm going to get my camel brown out. Um, okay, so here's my camel brown and we're going to color change... Um, in the chain one so we're gonna put our yarn over our hook and then we're just gonna do a chain one um with the new color and then we're gonna pull our yarn and then we're gonna so we're actually gonna work over our our cocoa brown so you're gonna work over your cocoa brown and then you're just gonna place one single crochet in each stitch across and remember you're going to work over this cocoa brown yeah so you're just going to place one single crochet in each stitch across Ok, 
Yeah, then again, we're gonna do our last single crochet. And then we are going to color change back to camel brown, sorry, back to cocoa brown in the chain one. So you're gonna drop the camel brown, pick up the cocoa, and then just do a chain one, and then pull on your camel brown just a little bit. And then you're gonna turn your work, and then you can leave your camel brown hanging there and then you're just going to place one single crochet into each stitch around uh, sorry into each stitch across until we have another four rounds of cocoa brown and then i'll come back and show you um, what to do from there yeah so again you're just going to place one single crochet into each stitch across and and until you have a total of uh, four rounds of cocoa brown or or ten rows in total So you can go off placing one single crochet in each stitch around until you have another four rows in black and then I'll show you how to colour change yet again. Okay. Okay, so now I'm back after completing another four rows and then again I'm going to drop my cocoa brown and then I'm going to pick up my camel brown. So I'm not going to worry too much about this because we are going to work over it. Or at least sew over it. So I'm going to um, yarn over and pull that through um, with my chain 1, then I'm going to turn my work and then I am now just going to place uh, one single crochet into each stitch um, across. Yeah. Oh, sorry, I was actually meant to carry my cocoa brown yarn, I forgot about that. Yes, yeah, so I'm gonna. I'm actually gonna go under this camel brown yarn just so that I can kind of get it to lay on the back side of the work, if that makes any sense, instead of it um, hanging um, on the front there. I don't know if I'm making much sense, um, but anyway, uh, let's flip my yarn over here. Okay, yeah, so let me try that again. Um, Okay, so I'm going to go underneath that, that front loop and then go into that first stitch that I did and then do my single crochet and then working over my cocoa brown we're going to place one single crochet into each stitch all the way across again And then again, once you get to the end, we are going to color change in our chain one. Okay, so let me just do this last single crochet. Okay, so now we're going to color change. So we're going to drop the camel brown, pick up the cocoa brown, and then you're going to do your chain one, turn your work, and then you're just going to place one single crochet into each stitch across for again another four rows in cocoa brown and your stitch count should remain the same as 17 stitches okay so now i've made it back round to the beginning and now it's time to end off so you can just grab your scissors and snip off your tail ends sorry snip off your yarn and you can snip off your yarn your camel brown yarn as well yeah, and then you can just weave in these tail ends like we've done before so you can grab your darning needle and then you're just going to work under those stitches um, like how we did previously um, so you just want to find um, so you just want to find those stitches and then just work underneath those stitches I found that the first row is always hard to work into. Okay, 
the very first black bottom row of the work is always hard to work into yeah so you just want to just sew underneath those stitches obviously making sure that your needle isn't poking out through the back If you so wanted to, you could also um, push all of your tail ends to the back side because um, since we're going to be essentially uh, putting this together and stuffing it, um, the tail ends would be on the inside of the, of the work. So if you wanted to, you could kind of just sew them in to this, the middle of the work and just leave them on the inside like that so you would essentially just leave them on the inside without really sewing them in and that way like they won't really come undone if it makes any sense it'll just kind of just sit there <laughs> amongst all the stuffing so you can just just bring it into the center if you so wanted to or you can just weave it in how you normally would Once you have sewn in your tail ends or pushed them to one side like what I have, this is what it should be looking like now. I don't know what's happened here, um, but anyway. Um, okay, so um, once you're happy with that, you can go and you can make another one exactly the same size as this. And now this should be exactly the same length or height as this other square. It should be six centimeters. Um, so if we have to grab our ruler here, it should equal six centimeters, in which it does. Um, so yeah, it does measure six centimeters. Um, so yeah, you can go off and you can make um, an exact one like this. And then I'll show you how to do the triangular one from there. Okay, so you can go off and repeat the same for the other one. And then I'll show you how to do the triangular piece for the top and bottom. Okay. Okay. So I am back and I have completed now uh, both sides and of course the top from earlier. Um, okay, so now we are going to now work on the top and the bottom one. Well, whichever one you want to start first. I'm going to do the top first, um, the top triangular piece first. So you just want to grab your peach brown yarn. We have my tail enders, I have no idea. Okay, so now I've got my peak brown, and now what we're going to do is we're going to make another slip knot. Okay. And then we are going to chain 13, um, sorry, we're going to chain 14 like what we did for our square or the front piece. So that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, and fourteen. And then we are going to place one single crochet in the second chain from hook and in each chain across.
so there we go there is our 13 chains yeah so now we're going to turn our work and now we are going to do a decrease so now um moving on to the next round we are going to decrease the first two stitches to together so you're going to find the front loops of the next stitch okay let me rather do this let me get my tapestry needle wherever it it is here somewhere. Ah, there it is. Okay, so there is obviously um, two loops that make up a stitch. So if I get my needle in here, you can maybe kind of see it. I know it's peep brown; it's quite dark. Um, but yeah, there's a front loop, and there's sorry, there's a front loop which is the loop closest to you, and then there is the back loop. So on every stitch that you do in crochet, let me maybe get one of the other pieces out as an example. Um, so with um, with crochet, obviously you have these little V's at the top of the stitches here. Um, yeah. So we normally work underneath both both loops of the stitch. Yeah, but for this purpose, for doing the invisible decrease, we're going to insert a hook through the, the front loop only. We're going to come out from outside, um, from the front of the stitch and poke your hook um, to the middle, from the front to the middle, and you should be able to find that front loop. Okay, so the normal stitch, you have the front loop, and then you have the back loop, which is the loop furthest away from you. So we're going to go into the front loop of the next two stitches. So we're going to go into the front loop like that, then twist a hook down, and then insert our hook into the middle, to the center of that next stitch, and down out the other side. Okay, so that's the way we are going to work into our front loop to do our decrease. So you're going to insert into the front loop of that next stitch, and then twist your hook down and insert your hook into the front loop of that next stitch and then you'll do single crochet as normal okay so that's what we will be doing um, for this first round we're going to decrease so you're going to find your first stitch and you are going to do an invisible decrease like how i've just shown you Yeah, so you'll do an invisible decrease and then you'll place one single crochet in the remaining 11 so that's one two three should have gone down from 13 down to 12 by the end of that round and then we're going to turn our work and then we are going to place one single crochet into each stitch across and your stitch count should remain the same as 12 stitches round we're going to turn and then we're going to place one single crochet into the next uh, 10 stitches so that's one two oopsie so that's one two three And then we are 
going to decrease So you're going to do your invisible decrease like how I've shown you and then you're going to turn and then your stitch count sorry by the end of that round should have gone down from 12 down to 11 by the end of that row and then you're going to turn your work and then you're going to place one single crochet into the next 11 stitches so that's one two three well into each stitch across and your stitch count should should remain the same as 11 stitches completed one single crochet in each stitch across um, and you have a total of 11 stitches we're going to turn our work and then again we're going to do a decrease into this first stitch so going to the front loop of that first stitch twist your hook down and then insert your hook into the front loop of the next stitch you're going to yarn over and pull through two and then yarn over pull through two to do your decrease and then you're going to place one single crochet into the remaining into the remaining nine stitches and then your stitch count should have gone down from 11 down to 10 by the end of this round sorry by the end of this row you're going to turn and then you're going to place one single crochet into each stitch across and your stitch count should remain the same as 10 stitches crochet into the next eight stitches so that's one two three four five six seven eight and then we're going to decrease the last two and again we're going to insert our hook into the front loop of that next stitch and then twist your hook down and insert your hook into the front loop of the next stitch. I do apologize if you can't really see what I'm doing properly. Um, this yarn is very dark. <laughs> um, so yeah, I just did a decrease now and again your stitch count should have gone down from 10 down to 9 stitches by the end of that row. And you're going to turn your work and then you're going to place one single crochet into each stitch across. And your stitch count will remain the same as nine stitches. stitches together so um, insert your hook underneath the front loop of that next stitch and then twist your hook down and insert your hook into the front loop of that next stitch then you're going to yarn over and pull through those two front loops then you're going to yarn over and pull through two to finish off your invisible decrease and then you're going to place one single crochet um, into the next 
um, into the next seven stitches. And your stitch count should have gone down from so from nine down to eight. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yes. You're gonna turn your work and then you're gonna place one single crochet into each stitch across and your stitch count should remain the same as eight stitches. And then after that, you are going to turn your work um, and then we're going to place one single crochet into the next, uh, into the next um, six stitches. So that's one, two, three, four, five, and six. And then decrease um, And then decrease the last two stitches together. Oopsie. I think I should have actually done the the bottom layer on camera because it's actually kind of hard to see with this dark brown dark brown yarn but I didn't think it was going to be an issue um okay so at the end of this row your stitch count should go down to seven stitches and then we're going to turn and then we're going to place one single crochet into each stitch across until you have a total of seven stitches And then you're going to turn your work and then we're going to do a decrease so find your first stitch and um and switch up into the front loop of that first stitch and then twist your hook down and insert your hook into the front loop of that next stitch and then yarn over and pull through those two front loops then yarn over and pull through two to do your invisible decrease and then place one single crochet into the remaining five stitches. And your stitch count should have gone down from seven down to six by the end of this row. Okay, and then again you're going to turn and then you're going to place one single crochet into each stitch across and your stitch count should remain the same as six stitches. turn your work and then we are now going to do one single crochet into the next four stitches so that's one two three four and then we'll do a decrease over the last two stitches so you'll decrease And then we're gonna do one single crochet in each. Okay, so you're, sorry, your stitch count should have gone down from six down to five by the end of this row, which we do have. You have one, two, three, four, five, which we do. Um, and then you're gonna turn your work. And then you're gonna turn your work, and then we're going to do one single crochet in each stitch across, and your stitch count should remain the same as five stitches. Okay, and then we're going to turn, and then we're going to do, um, and then we're going to decrease, so we're going to do, yeah, then we're going to do a decrease. Okay, so insert your hook into the front loop of that next stitch, and then the front loop of that next stitch, 
and then do your decrease and then place one single crochet in the remaining three stitches and your stitch count should have gone down from five down to four by the end of this round and now for our very last round we are just going to decrease twice so we're going to go into our first stitch find our front loop and then insert your into the front loop of the next stitch then you're going to yarn over pull through those two front loops then you're going to yarn over and pull through those two loops to finish off your single crochet then you're going to find your next your last two loops so your last two stitches insert your into the next stitch twist your hook down and insert your into the front loop of the next stitch then you're going to yarn over and pull through two and then you're going to yarn over and pull through two yeah and there we go that is what our little top of our slice should be looking like now yeah so that's a better look for you somewhat um okay so that's what it should be looking like now so you can just go off and repeat those exact same steps for the bottom one and then i can come back and then i'll show you how we are going to sew everything together and you can leave a long tail end when you um cut your yarn you don't want to leave too much of a long tail end but a deep a decent length to sew everything together okay all right so i've like left quite a decent amount of yarn okay so i've left quite a bit of yarn as you can see um so yeah i'm just gonna pull up and out now okay so you can just weave in this other tail end or just weave it in like how we've done before yeah okay, so you can weave it in like how you've done before like how we um have just gone under uh, some of the stitches if that makes any sense so you can just go under some of the stitches and then just like leave your tail end um, and then like leave your tail end on the one side and then we can just like leave our tail ends inside um, our work So yeah, if you want to, you can sew in your tail ends as normal, or you can weave them in just a little bit. Okay, so, but anyway, so you can just like thread your yarn into like the center or like around the bear, and then yeah, you could just like leave that hanging there inside the work. So you can go off and you can complete the same steps to make the bottom. So this was for the top. So if I get my other piece here, um, this was going to go kind of like, like that. And then the other two slices were going to go on the side. Um, maybe if I can get my camera to focus, that would be great. Okay, so like it would look something like that. And then this would kind of like go like that together. It's so hard to like put this together. Um... But yeah, so this is what it should be looking like. Okay, so that will be like the top and bottom essentially. And then this will be the one side that will go on like that. If that makes any sense. So yeah, so you can go off and you can do another one like this. But it will be for the bottom. Um, so yeah, you can go off and do another one like this following the same exact steps but in um, in the cocoa brown. So you're going to do one in peat brown and one in cocoa brown. Yeah, so you can go off and do that and then I'll come back and show you how we are going to sew everything together. Okay, so now I am back and um, this is what all the pieces look like together. So those are the two sides, that's the the back that's the top and then this one's the bottom okay so now we are going to start sewing everything together so i'm going to grab maybe like my top piece and then i'm going to get my darning needle where my darning needle is <laughs> and then we are just going to whip stitch these pieces together 
Yeah, so I'm firstly going to start off with one of the sides. Yeah, so it doesn't matter if it's like a little bit bigger. Um, but yeah, we are just going to have to make this work. I should have actually moved this um, tail end to the other side. So let me just do that. Okay, there we go. Okay, so I'm just going to do a whip stitch. So I'm just going to find my first stitch on the triangular piece and on the rectangular piece. And then I'm just going to like start whip stitching this close. Yeah, it doesn't have to be neat. Okay, so you're just gonna whip stitch this close. I feel like whip stitching will give it a more of like kind of like a realistic look if that makes any sense. Okay, so let me maybe zoom you guys in. Yeah. So yeah, you're just going to whip stitch it closed, so you're just going to come in from one side and out the other side and then yeah, you'll just repeat that going in from one side and then out the other side of the camp. So you'll just repeat this, whip stitching it closed all the way along, making sure your stitches are somewhat even. If that makes any sense. Yeah, I think whip stitching will give it. I think <laughs> will give it a more realistic look. Um, of course, if you have any other ways that you prefer to sew this together, you can do those methods. Um, if you choose, it's completely up to you how you want to sew this together. Um, I just feel like this is. Um, I feel like this would work. like joined the one side and this is roughly what it should be looking like I think that actually looks quite good okay and then I'm gonna get my back piece and then I'm gonna slot my back piece on here and then I'm gonna whip stitch this closed as well or should it go down this way I'm trying to figure out like what's the best route to go <laughs> okay so I think I'm gonna go this way and I think I'm gonna back stitch sorry whip stitch I think I'm going to whip stitch the back panel or the back piece to the side piece so now after whip stitching um, the back piece to um, to the side piece uh, we are now going to um, join the, the bottom piece on okay so now I'm just going to insert my needle into the bottom slice of the cake the cocoa and the cocoa triangular piece and the back piece of the cake and then I'm just going to carry on whip stitching this all the way um, to the other side. I honestly don't think I'll have enough yarn to finish whip stitching this, but we'll see. Um, so yeah, you're just going to whip stitch this. I'm just going to tuck this tail end into the corner and then just continue whip stitching. Okay, so that's what it should be looking like now. And then we can grab the other side piece. Yeah, so this is essentially what it looks like now. 
so maybe you can kind of get like a better and a better idea on how this is going to piece together okay so that's what it should be looking like yeah so we have the the chocolate ganache part so the dark brown on the top and on the sides and then this will be the other um the other side and then that's the bottom yeah all right so where was i okay so you just want to grab the other side piece okay i'm just gonna put that there and then again i'm just gonna whip stitch this brown tail end here is getting in the way okay there we go yeah so again i'm just gonna whip stitch this closed okay so now i've sewn on the other side and this is what it should be looking like Okay, so now you can kind of see how it's going to sit. Okay, so it's going to look like that. It's going to look like a, a proper like little cake. Okay, so sorry, it's actually the wrong way around. <laughs> okay, so it's actually going to look like that. Okay, it's coming to shape, guys. Isn't this cool? Okay, so with a little bit of yarn left, I'm going to try and whip stitch the top to the side now. Um, so yeah, I've just whipped whip stitched this corner together and now I am just going to now try and whip stitch um, the last side of this square down I really really hope I'm gonna have enough Okay, so there we go. I'm just gonna knot that last one there, and then I'm just gonna leave my tail end on there for now because I will weave it into the cake when I'm when I'm finished. Okay, so that's what it should be looking like now. Um, so yeah, now with the bottom, I'm now going to try and sew up um, this side. Um, so yeah, I'm now going to try and sew up this side, this side. Um, and then essentially um, and then I'm gonna sew down uh, sew these two sorry I'm going off frame here I'm so sorry about that okay so with this tail end from this triangular piece here I'm now going to try and sew down here um, I don't know what's the best way to go about this <laughs> oh gosh Okay, um, but yeah, so now I'm going to try and sew the rest of this closed, um, so I need to sew, um, this triangle, this triangle to this, the two side pieces, and then I need to, um, sew the side pieces to each other, and then I lastly sew the side piece to this one here, um, so yeah, um, Okay, let's just get started with this. Um, I don't know which is the best way to go about this. Um, da, da, da. I don't know which is the best way to go about this. I don't know. Okay, so let's just start with one side. So I am, uh, since my needle is this side, I think maybe I should start from this side. Okay. Again, I'm going to go into my stitch on the triangular piece and then into my stitch on the side piece. Yeah, and now I'm just going to whip stitch this again.
Okay, so now I've finished sewing up the one side. So now, um, so now I think I am just going to just kind of poke my needle out the side. I just need to make sure I do not pull tight on my yarn. Um, there we go. I think that should be okay. It's just going to lay in there, I guess. Okay, and then I'm going to stitch up this side, like the same way that we have been doing. slowly starting to take shape now isn't it just, isn't this just so cool guys honestly this is so exciting okay so i'm gonna try and make my last few stitches match up here as best as i can um Okay, so now I am just going to now tack um, the two sides together now. And the top of the cake might be a little bit funny, but we'll see. Okay, so I'm just going to whip stitch these two sides together now. It would probably be great if maybe the slices, those two sides are lined up. Even though it's probably not going to make much of a difference because of the cocoa yarn, but anyway. Okay. This is so cool guys, honestly. This is so awesome. I'm actually really loving the look of this cake already. Okay, so now I'm just gonna sew this the top down to there we go. Okay, so now what we need to do is we need to now stuff. So before we, um, before we do our last um, seam here or the last join, we need to stuff. So you can grab some of your stuffing and start filling up your cake. That is okay in terms of the stuffing so there is like a little bit of room at the top there but you don't want it to you don't want to overstuff it where it looks like a bit like a balloon if that makes any sense um but i don't know we'll see okay <laughs> oh gosh that's too funny i'll just like roll over look at that <laughs> okay so we're just going to continue um whip stitching this close would have looked better using peat brown yarn on this instead of mm, okay so I think what I'm going to do is I am just going to uh, I'm going to end off or I'm just going to okay so I'm just gonna leave that yarn there and then I'm just gonna get some peat brown yarn and I am just going to um, to whip stitch the last side together with the peat brown yarn because I feel like it will look a whole lot better. So I'm just going to 
snip some yarn. Yeah, I really think that it's going to look a whole lot better. Okay, so I'm just gonna grab my cake again and I'm just gonna go into the bottom slice or the side of the cake and then out through the top. And then I'm just gonna leave a bit of a tail there. And then I'm just gonna go back through those stitches and then I'm just gonna do like a little knot and see. I'm just gonna go through that loop that was there and then yeah now I'm just gonna continue sewing this closed with my peat brown Okay, so if you do need to stuff more, um, you can. I think maybe I should stuff a little bit more. Okay, there. I think this will be fine now. Yeah, it looks like quite a nice chunky cake, eh? Hey? Look at that. Looks like a nice, like, super thick cake. Okay, now to just finish uh, weaving this closed. Okay, so I'm just going to continue to whip stitch this closed. Well, I think I am happy with the way this cake looks. I mean, it's a little chunky. <laughs> um, but who, who doesn't love a big slice of cake, eh? Look at that. This thing's massive. It's huge. <laughs> I don't know if this will be ideal for a keychain, but anyway, we're going to turn it into a keychain. And I'll even put it on my backpack, because why not? Okay, so now I'm just going to weave in my tail end, um, so the way I'll, I'm going to do that is I'll insert my needle into the same stitch it came out of, and then poke it out somewhere else, oopsie, and then you will just repeat that, so you will um, insert your, your needle into the same stitch you came out of, and then come out somewhere else, and then insert your needle into the same stitch you came out of, and out somewhere else. Okay, and again, insert your needle into the same stitch you came out of and out somewhere else. And you'll just repeat this a few times until you feel like you have sewn in your tail end enough. With that you can just end off or snip your yarn and then repeat that
there we go once you've finished weaving in all your tail ends it is time to now snip your yarn yeah so that's what the actual cake looks like guys isn't that so cool okay so this is what it looks like so there's the chocolate ganache side this is the sponge of the cake with the with the chocolate butter icing isn't that just so cute guys okay now the last thing that we need to crochet is the candle so we can put our whole cake aside now or our little slice of cake aside and now it is time um to grab our blue um our blue yarn for the candle or whatever color you want to use for the candle and then you just want to grab your crochet hook Okay, and then we are going to make a, a magic ring. So to do a magic ring, you're going to take your yarn, wrap it around your two fingers once, twice, and then the third time you're going to cross over to form an X. Okay, then you're going to insert your hook underneath those two front loops, pick up the second loop, and then do like a chain one to secure. And then take your magic ring off of your fingers, and then what you want to do is you just want to place six single crochets into the magic ring. So that's one, two, one, two, three, four, five, and six. And then to close up your magic ring, you're just going to take your tail end and pull on that. And then you'll see a loop being pulled in. Then you're just going to take that loop and pull that loop down towards you and then that other loop should disappear and then you can just to get rid of this tail end or sorry this loop you just take your tail end and pull on that and then there you go your tail your magic ring has disappeared <laughs> okay and then we are now going to place one single crochet into each stitch around um okay so you will need a stitch marker for this part Okay, so place your stitch marker into the first stitch. Okay, and then you're just going to place one single crochet in each stitch around. Um, I don't know, until we get to the half that we want for the candle. Um, so you're just going to continue placing one single crochet in each stitch around. And your stitch count should always remain the same as six single crochets. remove your stitch marker and then again just continue placing one single crochet into each stitch around okay there we go okay so you're going to make sure that your that your work is facing the right way Okay, so now I am back and I've done a total of eight rounds in total. Um, so this is what it should be looking like now. So if you're happy with that, you can just end off. So find your next stitch and just slip stitch to that next stitch. And then you just want to leave a bit of a tail for sewing. And then you're just going to yarn over and pull up and through. 
and then you can either push this tail in down into um, your work or snip it off either way I just decided to just push it in there okay so if you want you can sew it on now um, but I feel like it would be easier to do the flames first so what you'd want to do is you just want to grab your yellow and your orange so you just want to grab a little bit of yellow um, you don't need much of this okay so I think I am just trying to see what's the best way to do this okay so I'm just going to snip some yarn Okay. and then I'm going to snip this again in half so we will essentially have four pieces okay and then what we are going to do is at the top here we are going to We are going to, I don't know what would be easier here. Okay, so I'm going to cut a little bit of orange yarn as well. Yeah, and then I'm just going to have So now I am just going to um, So now I'm going to have a four yellow yarns in total and one orange thread. Okay, and that's going to be like in the middle of all of this. Yeah, so I'm just going to take my crochet hook and I'm just going to insert it in and out through the top. So it makes any sense. And then I'm just going to pull all of that through. And then essentially do like a big like chain one in a sense. Okay, and then I'm just gonna push all of this through that loop. I'm just going to pull that tight and then I'm going to snip this like that and then I'm going to just going to brush this out okay. okay so now I'm just going to brush this out okay so once you um, have completed the like flame part we're not going to brush it out so you can take a fine tooth comb and just brush it out brush 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 okay so you just want to brush this out okay and then if you want you can shape it like a like a flame i guess give it a little bit of a haircut it's not quite what I had envisioned for the for the flame but I guess it'll do okay I think that'll do and then if you wanted to for this to hold its shape 
you can get some hairspray and spray this um, or you could leave it like that it's completely up to you um, I think I actually want to comb this out a little bit more and then again you may need to shape it after you've combed it again I think I'm happy with that. Yeah, I'm just gonna spray this with some hairspray. Okay, and then you can just shape it into whatever you like. And then yeah, I found that that hairspray really does make it um, really make it keep its shape. So you just want to leave it to dry for a little bit. Um, yeah, isn't that just cool? I think that is so cool. So yeah, I actually did this with. Um, I actually did this with uh, my my hedgehog keychain in order for the quills, which was just strands of yarn that I attached to the back of the porcupine, um, to be um, to be stiff or whatever you'd like to call it. Um, I literally just sprayed some hairspray. I really want the top of this flame to like kind of like stick together somehow. Yeah, so I'm just gonna spray this again. Okay. So yeah, this is just paper that I have on my desk, so don't worry about that if you are concerned. Just gonna throw the page away. Okay, whatever. I'm sure that'll be fun. It still looks cool, like an awesome little flame. Yeah. So you can leave that to dry, which shouldn't take very long. Okay, so I'm back and it has completely dried now. And look at how cool that is. Um, so yeah, it's a little bit stiff, um, but yeah, it'll work. So now all that we need to do is sew our candle um, to our cake, so we can just thread our darning needle. Okay, and then what we're going to do is we're just going to go in through one stitch on the candle. So you're going to go through one stitch on the candle and out the other side and then you're going to do the same for the cake so I want it roughly like sort of like towards the front because the um, the keychain is going to come like a little bit or maybe the keychain should sit on the edge hmm. I don't know but the candle should essentially be like in the middle of the slice of cake so I'm just gonna do that so I'm just gonna sew um, so yeah I'm just gonna sew down 
into the cake and I'm gonna start over two stitches on the candle and then I'm just gonna sew down into the cake again and then I'm just gonna sew down into the candle again like that and then into the cake again and then into the candle and then into the cake again into the candle and then into the cake again Okay, there we go. There's our little birthday cake. It's a bit floppy, but anyway, not our birthday cake, our candle. It's a little bit floppy. But anyway, if you wanted to, you could always put like a piece of wire in there to hold it down in place so it doesn't flop around so much. in place is I am going to come up into the candle like that and then let's see how well this works and then I'm going to sew one stitch over on the candle wherever this is I don't even know okay there one stitch and then I'm going to come out the opposite side and again, so one stitch over on the candle and then come back down into the cake again. And let's see if this does anything. So I'm going to pull on my yarn a bit. Okay, it's still a bit floppy, but oh well. Okay, so I'm just going to pull it down a bit and then... Just weave in my tail end, I think. But yeah, so it's gonna be floppy. If you don't want that, um, I would suggest stuffing it a little or adding in some wire. Or maybe like a skewer stick. So if you wanted to do a skewer stick, you could. Yeah, so I'm just gonna weave in my tail end. There we go, there is our little uh, cake with the little candle. And then I think I'm just gonna snip this off here now. Okay. And then there we go. There is our little candle and our cake. Let me zoom out. Okay, so there we go. There is our little birthday cake. Um, thinking about it now, I don't think this should actually be turned into a keychain. I think this should. Well, if you want to, you can, um, but I think specifically this should just be, um, just be a little amigurumi cake, just to remind me of my 2000 subs. Um, so yeah, I actually would like to embroider like 2K on here with like white yarn or something. Um, so yeah, I think I, I think I'm going to do that. Um, yeah, so I don't think this should actually be a keychain. Um, so yeah, if you want to, you can, but it is a bit chunky. I'm not gonna lie, it is a bit chunky, but I think it'll also look cute and funky as a keychain. Um, but yeah, I might change my mind about that, we'll see. Um, but if you would wanna insert the keychain, um, I think maybe inserting it maybe at the back here. Let's see how it's gonna look. 
So I'm not going to insert the keychain because I actually changed my mind about it. But if you guys um, do want the keychain on there, then that's fine. But I'm, I changed my mind about it. So I'm just going to close this jump ring just enough just for you guys to kind of get a feel or an idea on like where you want the placement of the jump ring to go and it's always tricky to close these things i tell you okay there okay well maybe not quite I don't know um you could maybe have it like that um but then it's like not sitting upright so i don't know it's entirely up to you what you guys want to do if you do want to turn this into a keychain or not um but yeah i thought you could but i think this is a bit too chunky um but yeah it does look cool as a, like if you did have to maybe make this smaller maybe three by three by four instead so be like a little micro cake then you could do that and do it as a keychain um yeah but yeah so i think that is it for this tutorial um so yeah i think it came out quite cool quite awesome i think in my opinion um so yeah okay guys so that is it for today's tutorial on how to crochet this cute little cake keychain um well or cake slice i don't know you could turn it into a keychain or just leave it like this but i think for the purpose of my for the purpose of my slice of cake um i think I think I am going to take the keychain off and just have it as a cute little slice of cake and yeah I'm going to embroider um, 2k on ya for 2000 subs um, so yeah um, but I really hope that you enjoyed learning how to crochet this cute little um, bar one cake slice keychain or just a slice whatever you prefer I really do hope you enjoyed learning how to crochet this cute little thing and um yeah again thank you guys so 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 much for 2000 subs i cannot believe it it is so 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 crazy it is so beyond me honestly um thank you guys so 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 much i wish i could send this cake to you um or well, let me rephrase that i wish i could have sent my bar one cake that i had earlier to all of you guys just to share just to share the 2000 sub um, celebration with you guys um, but yeah I don't think you, you can really ship food over um, to other countries <laughs> um, but yeah again thank you guys so 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 much for 2000 sub I really really appreciate every single one of you and just thank you thank you so much I literally I literally have no other words i'm like speechless to a certain degree um but yeah thank you guys for watching um please don't forget to like comment subscribe if you if you haven't already and also share my channel or share my videos it really does help out my channel and um it really does support me um so yeah that is it guys thank you guys so much for watching and thank you guys again for 2000 subscribers and um yeah thank you guys for watching and happy crocheting bye guys